So hi Manish, congrats for uh, converting ISI. Uh, so please tell about yourself. You did your graduation from where? What was your background? And uh, when you joined us? And when did you join us? And what was your preparation journey like? Sure. Um, thanks a lot, sir. Uh, I'll, I'll start by first thanking the whole journey and specifically you and Vidiman who basically taught us throughout the year across all the subject matters which is required for this exam. Um, a bit about myself. So um, I basically did my undergrad from BIT Mesra on computer science and engineering. I graduated in 2020. Um, since then I have been working in uh, one of my startups, one of these startups. And uh, I learned about the whole ISI MSQ program and I literally got very curious about the whole exam and it aligned with my interests. So I started pursuing this. Um, this was my second attempt. Um, in the first attempt, I missed the PEB cutoff. And um, this year, thankfully, I got through. Yeah. And when you joined us? I joined in August 24. 24. Okay. So, um, so what was your preparation journey like? Uh, mainly which books you followed, how you made notes, what revision strategy you had? Hmm. So I only followed your lectures throughout end to end. And uh, that is what helped me the most. However, I did read the variant book a bit and I found that the videos uh, which were uploaded on the platform, they were covering more out of it and they were more focused towards the exam. So I focused entirely on the videos after a certain point of time. Um, mm -hmm. I used to make notes a lot. Um, initially, I was refraining from only adding this summary, but then I realized I need to make notes each and every crucial point that you're mentioning. Mm -hmm. um, yes. Uh, that was all about the note making. Uh, my primary focus was on completing the syllabus because it was vast for me. I had no background in micro and macro at all. So mm. I have to start from scratch. Mm. Uh, I had a good understanding of maths. Uh, the JEE maths helped me a lot. So I used to focus more on the macro and micro concepts that you were teaching us. Uh, the specific part that uh, was troubling for me was to convert the whole uh, economic ideas into mathematical formulations and then trying to study it formally. That is what I was more focused in towards my studies. Hmm. Hmm. And you did all tests, all quizzes, assignments, everything? Uh, I used to do, I, I did all the quizzes for micro, but since due to the lack of time, I couldn't uh, do the quizzes for micro and maths. Okay. And for, uh, and, and tests? Uh, yes, I did attempt a couple of CUT tests, but uh, I, instead, instead of the tests, I focused heavily on the assignments um, because that was more for me like a live problem solving session with you. Oh, so oh, it was very fun for me to solve those tough uh, ISI problems uh, alongside with you. So yeah. I focused heavily on the assignments. And so I gave... Were... Focused since the beginning on ISI than uh, D school or CUT. Yes, yes, I was only yeah. solely focused on ISI itself. Okay, uh, so your focus was only ISI. Yes. Uh, okay, that is. But even uh, if somebody clears D school, I mean, there is hardly any difference between in yes. ISI and D school. In fact, while doing the problem statements, I was inclined towards DSC problems it, are tougher sometimes. Sometimes, so, yeah. Uh, but you know what I mean? I don't know. I mean, these ISI and D-School problems, you do it every year. I mean, we guys do it every year while teaching. But sometimes somebody will ask some very different question. Yes. And uh, that will be an eye-opener. I mean, we can also think in this way. So when we, when we teach also, we also learn a lot uh, from the doubts, from the questions which people ask. So that is there. So how many times you did these ISI and D-School problems? So I did the ISI up till 2015 to 24. Uh, I revised a lot and I did those 10 years paper for at least three times. Um, so that is what gave me the rigor. Including the school problems. Yes. yes. Including these school problems. Yes, yes. Okay. And uh, 
so what was uh, how much time you can give so you can also you are an outlier in this that you are also working and you uh, you are able to clear very nicely so how much time you were able to devote and uh, were you uh, were you on social media or were you not there i mean how much time was wasted or utilized or whatsoever so so also i have to that. heavily optimize on the time whichever i had so morning to us that was the bread and butter i have to devote any here anyhow um that was where i learned the lecture i watched the lectures and thought throughout the day on the concepts that i had learned in the morning in the evening i used to solve problems focused heavily on the assignment section um so two hours in the morning and two hours in the evening on weekdays and on weekends all all those uh, are open i have to devote every inch of the time in that okay, so no social life or what was it there uh, of course a well we are working there is a social circle uh, <laughs> i uh but time not on any facebook or in instagram i deleted it way back 3 to 4 years back hmm but uh, no social media time it was mainly around work study work study work study so it's very good i mean uh, there are very few people who can do work as well as clear this paper very easily and uh, so that's 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 the reason i said you are an outlier in this case because most of the people uh, whom we are teaching they are either working or sorry they are either uh, studying in third year or some of them are also doing their masters first year and they also mm -hmm. join they want to get a better college or something and uh, but acha working mein ye bhi tha ke in the last 2 3 months also you didn't take any off or what no i good i had a few people who were working also but they said this that from january onwards they took a break that for the next 6 months we are now we are out of the job so we will come back in case if it's not there otherwise we'll continue that's very good that, that's but, but that's risky also so this is not something which we advise to everyone uh, although mm -hmm. i always tell my students ke bhai do some part time job but you had a full time job yes yes oh you are an outlier <laughs> that's that that's uh, uh, that that's very good that's very good so any other uh, thing which you want to tell to the future aspirants how they should do and should they copy you should they not copy you no no i i would heavily advise against copying but there are some things that i would suggest first off that do consider msqe program its syllabus read its syllabus read what you're going for the, uh, going to read for the next two years uh, see what interests you um the major motivation for me was the genuine interest in this subject because for me the one thing that helped me a lot i think this is one advice which can be applicable to everyone out there um look we don't have much time to grasp within a year every syllabus that we have so what i used to do was i used to apply the concepts which i was reading for example marginal rate of substitution i used to whenever i used to do some grocery shopping i used to apply should i buy this or that uh, so every where i used to see is this concept applied here or not classic example being rctc booking when you book any tickets is it a first degree discrimination third degree or second degree these kind of things helped me think every time about the concepts that i was learning so i used to focus heavily on the concepts and its application that helped me a lot this um, is like almost living these concepts this is yes. very good this yes. is excellent very good uh, secondly yeah. the other thing was due to the vastness of the syllabus it is very easy to get lost so at least for me because i have to cover the three year syllabus within a year or so so i used to create mind maps i used to create stories out of it um for example this syllabus that i have i can broadly divide it into two three points uh, two three uh, major paradigms now i used to see how does the first paradigm evolve into the second paradigm and subsequently what are the various applications now these kind of mind maps helped me revise a lot because they created a story in my head saying i started with the whole demand function read about the whole rigor of mathematics now i try to apply it into the production theory and see how those same concepts are applied within a very different setting and set subsequently into monopolistic various flavors so 
all those kind of stories helped me revise things that hey this is what a monopolist is doing why because in the second paradigm i learned this why is it happening so because in the first paradigm i learned this so it was very easy for me to revise it in the last minute also excellent and what about macro so macro uh, so any specific uh, point i should mention here or? yeah yeah why not i mean because i mean the reason i am asking is is that uh, somebody uh, who were similar there are people who are similar uh, who were from similar backgrounds they always told even asit was an engineer i mean who got uh, rank 4 in cvt and i think he cleared isi also 29th rank so he also said this that he found macro little difficult as compared to micro because there are so many connections there Correct. although i feel macro is also as mathematical as mac as micro but yes. uh, uh, what's your take on that so how you did that hmm. so before joining the course for me macro was a big forest i don't know where to start i don't know where to end that was one thing so first of all i needed the structure i watched the lectures and at the end of it i found out okay there are three four things that are really important for the exam and there are three four things that may or may not get asked in the exam so first of all i focus solely on those critical models that i have there is no um, definite structure that i could apply there but i uh, segregated them into big chunks and studied them end to end um i was not able to say that hey this is what uh, is super crucial for the exam and i cannot skip that part so i have to read everything but it's just the relative importance between the topics that i have to arrange on that how we studied but i solely depended on the lectures there was no way i could have deciphered blanchard <laughs> within a year and and math stats so maths uh, i i referred to whole videos and uh, referred to my je notes so they completed everything uh, in addition to that i solved tomato book for solving a lot of questions there which gave me the uh, initial warm up so where did you get time to all to do all of this i want to do anything extra apart from the assignments and quizzes so that means the time management is also very important yes so yes. somebody who is doing an 8 hour job and maybe in a startup you can also be asked to sit late uske yes. baad bhi if uh, we are doing everything what needs to be done so yes. it means that somebody who is very focused on what he or she wants so that that's commendable ke bhai maine ye bhi kara ye bhi kara ye bhi kara because course hi itna bada hai uske beyond bhi ja ke if somebody is able to do so that means that shows that i want to achieve this mm-hmm. and for that i mean there is a sacrifice whatever sacrifice i have to make i'll do that so that's excellent mm-hmm. so uh, so you didn't get over confident in maths so sometimes i've seen that uh, uh, people from maths background or stats background they get very over confident in maths और वो उनके मार्क्स उसी में कमाते हैं जैसे मैं बताऊ जो आई एस पढ़ाता हूँ मैं सो उसमें डी स्कूल के बच्चे जो होते हैं वो कई बार बहुत ओवर कॉन्फिडेंट हो जाते हैं पेपर वन में जो कि माइक्रो है उनके माइक्रो में सबसे कम नंबर आते हैं सो यू कैन बी ओवर कॉन्फिडेंट इन एनी थिंग इवन इफ यू नो दिंग्स यू स्टिल हैव टू डू इट अकॉर्डिंग टू द सिलेबस एंड अकॉर्डिंग टू द पेपर एट हैंड the reason i got humbled in the first attempt is because i couldn't even uh, move the first question in sip ev 24 so that was more like ki, no maths even though if you know there is no way you know everything so hmm. you need to do the grunt work here yes and uh, sub- sub- subsequently on the stats part i referred heavily on with imams lecture um, there were a lot of topics that i have not even touched base on yet but uh, since i had the base ready with the probability stuff so i was able to quickly ramp up on the stats part right so uh, so that is it so are you will you be working also or will you leave job right now also uh, no i i'll be devoting so, time here <laughs> okay, I mean, even with isi i'm going to work so i am mm-hmm. but anyone doing that so i mean if you are there <laughs> No, no, I, that's not uh, possible as well. Oh, oh. right. But I am really wanting to study the in depth of the whole economics yeah, domain. Yeah. I said I'm going to do that uh, for you for sure, and you'll be doing PhD later. 
uh, I want to keep my options open. I don't want to decide it right now, now because it's a it it opens so many doors that I don't want to get confused right now. And you were there in I side Delhi or Kolkata? Kolkata. 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 Very good. Very good. Chalo, all the best and uh, congrats once again. Uh, do very well there and keep it done, Chuda. Chalo. Thanks a yeah. lot. So